And what is up, everybody? Welcome back to It's Cosplay Time. I am Chris, a.k.a. Mr. Zoom underscore 2028, with my two co-hosts. Star Fox. And Eagle Ella on TikTok. And today we are here with our special guest. What's up, guys? I'm Marty Dobbin. Uh, I'm the voice of Mozzie from Rainbow Six Beach. So exciting. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, and starting off with the first question as soon as my phone unlocks. Oh, Q&A time. Yep. Yeah. First Grab question. <laughs> what made you want to get into voice acting? Uh, well, I started out as an actor. You have to forgive me. I've got this crazy dog <laughs> in the street. It's scanning the streets for coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> And he's going to bark, but the, the owner's walking him, so he won't be long. Um, I started out when I was a, a young kid. My uh, dad was a film producer, and he produced a lot of commercials. And he got me doing commercials when other actors couldn't do the job. I'd get pulled out of school. And then that sort of just progressed into bigger parts. And then when I was a teenager, I got my first TV show. And then uh, I think my career went down the toilet for a little while. Um, but boy, no, it did. It did. You know, it's a rough. It's a rough career, especially in Australia, where there's not heaps of work. And then, um, my cousin was a producer for ABC Radio, which is Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and she used to bring me into voice audio books. So I started doing audio books, and then at this, I think it was the same. No, it was a different studio. Um, I started doing radio commercials and then that kind of took off and I did a lot of radio commercials and then moved to the States and didn't do voiceovers, auditioned for a lot of voiceovers until a few years ago I started booking some video games. So that's how it happened and it's awesome. been great ever since. <laughs> well, the community definitely enjoys you. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a couple of Mozzie Cos players that are freaking out right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Skrill yeah. uh, texted me. He said to say hi. Yeah. Oh, g'day, Skrill. How are you? He's amazing. <laughs> oh, he he's going to be so happy. We yeah. love him. Yeah, he's going to be happy. He knows the I've watched. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but I've met a few. I've met a few cos, uh, Mozzie Cost players up in Montreal at the Six Invitational. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and I met cos, 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 Cosplay Chris uh, at the Fortress launch. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was a launch. Uh, they launched mm -hmm. year five. R6 at Fortress in Melbourne. Right before lockdown. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I got some good, good shots with Chris. So, yeah, there you go. Mm. All right. Okay. So, are we just wanting to ask more questions or what are you wanting to do? Uh, yeah. Are we going like the circle of alternating questions? Oh, I didn't know that. All or right. The I guess three question answers. So, it's the triangle. Oh, well. The circle of glory. <laughs> Yeah. Things do look different on my screen, so I don't know what, uh, which way we're going. <laughs> but I guess I'll go. Um, All right. So uh, I was actually wondering, because I've heard a couple of different responses from different people, but how exactly was the character pitched to you, or did you go forth to try to nab this character yourself? Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> You know, a brief gets sent out um, for the jobs, like on pretty much any acting job. Um, it was all uh, under wraps. Code, they used code names, and I had no idea what it was for. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it said kind of a laconic Australian guy. Yeah. I think it said, yeah, rides a motorbike in the, in the script. You know, he's talking about gridlock. And, um, yeah. and I don't know. I just read it. It's some, some, most scripts I'll say, you know, you get them and you're like, I could do something with this or I'll try and make it, you know, more appropriate to me. This was just, I just read the words and I was like, oh yeah, I know this guy. Okay. <laughs> this is me when I've had, you know, a few too many beers. <laughs> <laughs> so very close to home, very easy to uh, nail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just kind of, kind of slipped into it and. Um, yeah, there wasn't, wasn't much character development, a lot of dialogue. Um, so I spent time, you know, getting my, my dialogue down and, 
um, the audition process went smoothly and uh, there were a lot of other Aussie actors in there at the time auditioning as well. And it, I was, it was good because there was so much dialogue and not a lot of information on what the project was. Mm. So I, and it was kind of thin walls in the casting, um, casting booth. So faintly in the distance, I could kind of hear other people um, auditioning, which, you know, is pretty normal. Um, and you could, I could just feel, yeah, that's not the guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit more confident than usual. Yeah. So it was good. Cool. Yeah. You're like, I'm the guy, I'm the one you want. <laughs> Yeah, it's very rare that you go, this is my job. I know it's my job. Don't even bother. You know, don't, even bother. don't even bother auditioning. It almost never happens, actually, but this was one of the ones when it did. So, no, it was good. It was good. I'm glad that it worked out for you. Thanks. Okay. Corona, my turn. How many? The Corona Dogs. How many? <laughs> the Corona oh. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, no, okay. <laughs> okay. So with the Twitch Prime drops, we all have seen the Mozzarella skin, um, <laughs> Pizza Boy. If you could, what voice lines would you give that specific skin? Wait. Say that again. What what voice lines? It's for like um, you know the the Pizza Mozzie skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you could give. Uh, Pizza Mozzie, some voice lines, what would you give him? Well, it's funny because I did a TikTok video yesterday asking for suggestions. And oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, and no one gave any, but then someone DM'd me with this amazing list and I can't read them oh because they're in my phone that I'm talking on. Oh. Um, but I, the thing that kept coming to my mind, because funnily enough, I used to... Uh, be a pizza delivery man. Can oh, you yes. believe it? Yeah. <laughs> um, my friend had a restaurant out in out in the country, and he's like paid me an obscene amount of money to deliver pizzas. Pasta mania, it's called. Great place, delicious <laughs> pasta, even better pizza. Um, but uh, yeah, I, so when I when I saw the the, the pizza face, Mozzie. Um, all, the thing that I kept thinking of was all of Michelangelo's lines in the original uh, Ninja Turtles movie. Um, yeah. And he goes, it slices, it dices. And he's probably can't remember the rest of that one. <laughs> but then he says, uh, Confucius said, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. And that's one of the moments I was thinking. But then, you know, when he, when, uh, if Mozzie gets smoked in the head in, in a battle or something, uh, I think he'd be like, oh, mate, that's a bit cheesy. This need to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So say he like, like machine gun someone, he could go, mate, a pepperoni him just like in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's all going to sound a bit ridiculous. Anything I come up with. But if you guys have any suggestions, I'm happy to do them for you right now in Mozzie's voice. If you have any specific <laughs> things you want to hear. Did anybody give you a uh, pizza time? It's pizza time! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, the list, the list goes on, you know. So we used to yeah. have, I used, I used to be quite chubby when I was younger. And when, when these two kids at school were teasing me, they'd go, we, we, so we had Pizza Hut here, right? Yeah, Pizza Hut in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When I say you, I mean us, because I live there too. <laughs> we jingle, and they go one three double one double six, one three double one double six, one three oh. double one double six. Pizza Hut delivery, <laughs> and that was our Australian jingle. So I'd probably be saying that each time I, I nailed someone as Mozzie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very sweeting. Yeah. Dogs back. Oh, he's doing a protect. It's okay. <laughs> and it brought it to the truck. <laughs> my guard dog, like in the Terminator, making sure they're not coming to get me. Okay. All right. Question number two from me. What has been your favorite convention or fan event to go to? Well, I would have to say uh, Six Invitational. So... Like I've been a gamer my whole life, but not like 
maybe to the extent of you guys. Um, I've, I haven't dressed up as a as a game character yet. I'm not saying I yeah. won't. Just it does look, in fact, I wouldn't mind. I nearly tied a piece of pizza to my head the other day as a goose. <laughs> um, but yeah, six invitational. I, you know, I'd heard I'd heard the legend that it was this wild, big, huge event, but nothing could have prepared me. It was out of control. It was out of control. Um, and it was cool because there were a lot of the other um, Rainbow Six. So I think there was eight of us up there, voice actors. And some of them I've become really good friends with. And there was a couple of new people that I hadn't met. I had I'd never met Patricia before um, or Carlos. And they're just such a cool group of people. And everyone from Ubisoft's, they're, honestly, they're so amazing. So hanging out with them is like hanging out with your best friends, which is very rare mm-hmm. for, you know, work things. People are always cool, but not like that. Mm-hmm. Ubisoft are the best. So anyway, I got up there and we, and we, had our panel. I don't know if you guys saw any of the footage online. Mm. And mate, there was people for, I don't even know how long, but it went for three and a half hours nonstop. And they said we had to cut off the line or it would have gone all day. And so for us, you know, we finally got to meet a lot of the Rainbow Six fans in person and everyone was really, really nice and welcoming. Um, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know what to expect because in my mind, oh, more dogs, more dogs. In my <laughs> In my mind, I was like, well, you know, I'd never been to a Comic-Con before. So I didn't know how fanatical the Rainbow Six fans were, you know. But they loved the game, but they were all cool. Like, no one was crazy. There was one guy who was a little bit strange. Um, there was just one. one. Yeah, there was always one. Um, but no, for the most part, everyone was just so nice. And, and the vibe there was unreal. Like, everyone was, you know, we were all really happy to be there. And, um, and then... I got to go into the stadium after we did the signing. Fuck a duck. Have you guys been, <laughs> to, it? Have you guys been to it? I <laughs> have not been yet. I'm going next year. Uh, not yet. Yeah, same. I'm planning yeah. on going next year. Have to go next go. year. Go. Yeah. We'll all hang out. Um, I'm going to go even if I'm not invited. Um, <laughs> well, you have to be in. <laughs> you have to, yeah. We're going to get the pizza. Well, I, hope, I hope so. Yeah, I'm going to pizza. Um, but it, like, it was I've never seen anything like it. I mean, imagine going to the biggest sports event you've ever been to and the stadium is just screaming and all the voice actors were looking at each other going, holy shit, this is off the charts. So a long answer to a short question, Rainbow Six Invitation. Well, to us, you are the character. Like you say, yes, you have your own name, but to all of us, to everybody, you're also, hey, dude, that's Mozzie. Like, (laughs) so I'm sure it's a huge deal to everybody. (laughs) No, I know. Look, I'm, I am, I am the voice of the character. You know, I, I always have to remember that like hundreds and hundreds of people have gone into developing Mozzie. Mm. I'm very lucky that I get to, you know, uh, bring a voice to him. Um, but it was amazing when I was in, uh, when I did my the what's it called the uh, tournament of champions. We did all the motion capture for that. I was lucky enough to go into Ubisoft. Um, and get shown around and meet a lot of the people that developed Mozzie and a lot of the other characters. And wow, I had no idea just how much work went into it. Like there's literally hundreds of people that contribute in some way, shape or form. So yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing to, to get to voice a character that's had that much input from so many people and, you know, everyone seems to love him. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves yeah. him. He's definitely a favourite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's great. He's great. He's become my friend, you know, and it's nice to be able to switch into him. You'll notice the difference when you're watching this back when I'm like this. And then I'm turning to Molly. <laughs> and the, and you, know the funny, you know the funny thing is, when I, I think when I originally uh, did all the voice lines, I don't know that I switched into him. I think I was just being me. But as it's progressed, he's kind you know, the voice is kind of taking on a life of its own. I don't know. It's very strange. That happens with acting roles often. Um, okay, so I'm sure you get this a lot, but what's your favorite voice line? This was a question that one of my friends wanted to know. <laughs> um, it, it's an interesting one because, you know, I prefer the dialogue. So when I, when I did Tournament of Champions, uh, 
when we shot it, there was, you know, a lot of extra stuff that, that didn't make the final cut, which is very normal. Um, so there are a lot of lines in there, but I still love, honestly, the the first um, teaser for Burnt Horizon mm-hmm. with me and Pitlock. And it's the dialogue there when, when he's sitting there, oh, it's quiet out here. And then Gridlock says her thing. You know, no, I think she says nothing the first time. And I go, oh, it's like, it's like, it's like really, really. And she goes, was quiet. And then they, you know, <laughs> Gridlock, the boy's axe. So, yeah, <laughs> set the dog off again. So yeah, I, I think I love that one because it's just yeah. very much him, like just yelling, whatever, get it done. So yeah, probably gridlock the boy tracks. Mm-hmm. I love how much comedy he brings into the game. Just like as soon as he yeah. speaks, you're just, you're just laughing at something. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're just like setting up in here, caught a drone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, he's funny, and I think I think he's got you know, or the character's got a good philosophy on life. It's kind, of, it's very similar to mine. Like, don't take it too seriously; things will get crazy. Still, keep a smile on your face. Don't turn on your friends. You know, mm-hmm. just just have fun. There's a line in Tournament of Champions when uh, I think Mozzie's just been shot, and the defenders have I don't know if they've lost, but there's a couple of them on the bench. And I think it's Kyvera. And she's all pissed off and, you know, mm-hmm. cast some mozzie out. And he just looks at her and he goes, you need to relax. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, very, that's very much like a me thing to say when it's true. But I also know how much it will piss someone off when I say that. Because it's <laughs> yeah. when someone's worked up and they're caught in their own head. And yeah. you give them the best advice you can. You know it's going to set them off. So it's... It's not, I like that. And I think Mozzie's a bit like that. Yeah. You know? I yeah. remember watching that scene and I heard him say that and I was like, oh, she's so mad. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Who's next? Who's next, guys? What are you, what are you, yeah. got, what are you coming at me? <laughs> um, so it's kind of like two parts, but what do you think about like, cosplayers and would you ever want to do like a cosplay thing yourself so yep keep going what were you gonna (laughs) so like i don't know some people like might aren't like fans of cosplay like they think it's kind of weird but like as a perspective of like someone that helped like bring the character to life how do you feel like seeing other people like cosplay the character as like another way of like bringing it to life. I'll give you another big answer to a short question. (laughs) I didn't, I'll be completely honest. I didn't know what cosplayers were when I got this job. And then on the lead up to six invitational, I put some stuff on YouTube and I, and I started getting hit up by people and seeing cosplayers. And I've heard the word cosplay thrown around and I'm like, the fuck is cosplay? Because <laughs> I'd never been to a Comic-Con or anything, you know, but I'd, I'd seen people dressed up as their, you know, favorite movie or, or video game person or cartoon or whatever. I'm like, what's, so I'm on Google. I'm like, what is cosplay? I was at the gym. I remember, I remember doing it. I was in the car park at the gym. It's like, I better figure this out or I'll say something stupid online. And look like <laughs> And, and then I found it out. And obviously since then, like, you know, I'm so experienced with cosplay. I know everyone, <laughs> That's a bad exaggeration, but I think, uh, it's wonderful. Would I dress up as in, you know, would I do cosplay myself? I don't know. I would, fa- one of my favorite things is like times of the year is Halloween because mm. I love like putting on a good costume and, you know, in all seriousness, I feel like I do it for a living. Um, I mean, it really is my job is to dress up as somebody else. It's like playing right. dress up when you're a kid. Um, but pro- I, I don't know. I don't know that I do it other than at Halloween. And on Halloween, <laughs> I love it. Like I'll do the full thing and get bangs and contact lenses. I'll be walking around. I can't see a bloody thing. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I, 
I, th- I feel like I do that for a living with every character. You know, we go in and we have wardrobe fittings and, and you talk to stylists and you oh, know, cool. fig- figure all that sort of stuff out. Um, but in terms of, I think they're great. I think they're great for movies. I think they're great for, for video games. Um, I love how creative people get. You know, as I said, I do it for a living often with a bunch of people, but I used to love it playing dress-ups when I was a kid, you know, dress up as a cowboy or... Um, <laughs> You know, but now you've, we've got all these amazing characters. I mean, look at you know, look at you guys. Look at you over here. <laughs> is that who is that? Is that Tachanka or something? Taylor. Chris? It's a uh, fuse. Oh, fuse! Right, right. Oh, I want Just... to get fuse on TikTok for you guys. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be He's awesome. Legend. Yeah. Boy, the voice of the legend. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. I think it's really great for the community. And at the end of the day. I think any success that, you know, films or video games have is only there because of, you know, the people that love them and, and the energy that they, that they give them, you know. And I think with the video games, I think video games and anime, like I've seen a lot of anime cosplayers and it's incredible mm-hmm. seeing people bring what a lot of uh, visionary artists sort of ultimate, you know, view of a character is, actually bringing that to life. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's exciting. And I think, you know, the games wouldn't have the hype without it. Um, and that's that was the highlight of, of, for me, apart from hearing the roar of the crowd at Rainbow, at the Six Invitational, but going outside and seeing all the cosplayers there. What's this thing? What is <laughs> oh, that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, um, you know that? Were you know they doing this? About? Were they doing that? Oh, and they were like that. And they're like they shooting. All, there was like, like peeking. I don't know, Fifty <laughs> cosplayers all making this noise yeah. and going like this together. It was amazing. Because it's like um, a joke, kind of like a dance. Like the only way you can really dance is like moving side to side. <laughs> like, yeah, I do it in game because you can make them like crouch and peek, so they're just like. Oh, that's must. Have, yeah, I think that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you oh, know, but that was amazing, and and the community's all cool, and it's just it's people having fun and uplifting each other, you know. And when I was at school, we used to get bullied for for that sort of stuff for being, you know, <laughs> ourselves, being individual yeah. and doing what we love, and and it was so cool to see a group of people who were like, you know, fuck really anyone who doesn't like this, we love it, and we yeah. support each other, and um, and I'm all about that, you know, coming from from you know being a short little chubby redhead in high school who was very weak and, you know, couldn't defend himself and get, getting picked on a lot for having red hair and bad teeth and whatever. Um, you know, I don't, I don't like seeing when, when people can't just be themselves and be individuals. And when you see people like, you know, dressing up in cosplay and, and having fun, just doing what they love, hey, it's the best. And, it, you know, it supports the games they love and, and it builds a community of, of love and support. I mean, look at you guys, you all talk to each other and yeah, I just, I just can't get the, Electrify Skrill's videos out of my head when he's dancing. Around. <laughs> so good at dancing. Yeah, I, I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's you know I think it's wonderful, and I, I feel very privileged to have been introduced to that um, in the capacity that I have. You know, I feel mm. like I had the golden ticket to to Charlie's Chocolate Factory. You know, <laughs> being, being able to voice Mozzie and and meet you guys in this way, it's been really cool. So wholesome. You're so wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some of the interviews that you've done in the past, and I was like, he's such a nice guy. Like, normally I'd be super intimidated, but like, I saw those, and I was like, oh, he's like really down to earth, and he's really nice. And you're like saying the things that you're saying. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> well, I can't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think I can, I think I probably tried to be the other, you know, be a bit cool in the past <laughs> when, you know, your career is developing, you don't really know how to handle it, and it, it uh, doesn't work. It's not me. I don't like it. I'd very rather wholesome. just have chats with people, you know. Very wholesome. But thank you. That's very nice of you to say. <laughs> Wait, um, I forgot. Is it Zoomy's turn or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you play video games? If so, on what platform and what is your favorite game of all time? You ready for this? <laughs> well, I'm telling you my video game history. Because I don't, no one else cares except the people who care. So, <laughs> no, so I remember the very first game that I ever had. Um, I was in my living room in Australia, and you know, I was a movie fanatic. Uh, it's horrifying how many movies I've watched. Oh, look, Aussie Postman. Can you see him? <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> oh, 
He's, he's, wearing, he's wearing like a fluorescent yellow, um, a fluorescent yellow thing, and he's got to wear a helmet. Well, obviously because he's on a bike. Have you guys heard of magpies? Oh, the, the angry yellow, birds. Yeah, right? those little dive bombing birds. The angry birds. <laughs> so fucking pissed off. Angry birds again. Killed a lot of them. They attack particularly posties when they're delivering your mail. Google oh posty magpies. And you see these people just like, they'll take chunks out of your head. They're crazy, but they've got the most beautiful song in the world when they sing. Oh my God, it's amazing. Okay, so I'm in my living room and, and dad pulls out this little white box. Um, and I'll reveal my age here. This, was, this would have been in like maybe 1981 or something. And oh, look, now the dog's going at the post. <laughs> wait, wait, you're going to be able to see him. Hang on a second. Wait, he's, he's behind the bushes at the moment. I want you guys to see him. Hang on. Watch this. He's about to go through this gap. Tell me if you can see his fluorescentness. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. oh he's so oh, bright. Man. <laughs> man, he's like neon color. He's got a little flag on his butt. What? I know. He's just rolling through. <laughs> just turning around. So anyway, he pulled out this little white box and it was, uh, he it, we, like literally had to wire it, like twist the wires to connect it to the TV. That's how old school we're talking. They're going to have to burp. No, I already did it. <laughs> got and, it out. Uh, I got it out. And it was um, it was Pong. You know the game Pong? Mm-hmm. With the two yeah. paddles? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so my that's goodness. Started. And, I, and I played it for a while um, and until it got, like, super, super, super fast. And, oh, hang on. CoStar just sent me a message saying, everyone deserves to be listened to and loved. That's nice, isn't it? Aw. Um, <laughs> And so that was my first game, and I think I played that until I couldn't. It got too fast. Then I moved on to. We used to have these uh, personal computers, PCs. I think it was like a two eight six. Um, I don't know how much you know your history of PCs, but on that, <laughs> I think we had games like um, two eight six. I think I played Street Fighter, the first one. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And around that time, there was like Duke Nukem. Um, which was amazing. Leisure Shoot Larry, which was like, it was kind of like this porno game where <laughs> Larry had to go to walk around the city and go to brothels and try and get laid. It was crazy. And I was at that age where it was like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> I was going at the time. Um, so that was, that was pretty funny. And, um, but I loved all those games, Lemmings, all the PC games. I, I lost hours and hours, never did homework because I was playing those. But then when it got serious, I got, my friend had an Atari. You guys remember Ataris? You've probably all got yeah. Atari t-shirts. <laughs> and there was, what were some of the games? I think it was George of the Jungle, Space Invaders. Um, I never really played Commodore 64. But then the first Nintendo came out with Mario Brothers, which I loved, but I never had a Nintendo because I went, I was the um, competition. I was Sega. Mm-hmm. So I got a Sega. Uh, so I was never brilliant at Mario Brothers. I've got it now, though. But Alex the Kid in Miracle World. Did you guys ever play that? Can't say that I did. Okay, yeah. you got to Google Alex the Kid in Miracle World. It's quite possibly the greatest game of all time, um, apart from Zelda Breath of the Wild and Rainbow Six Siege. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I so I, I finished out Alex the Kid in Miracle World, and that was – I think I spent three months on it, maybe four months, just every night after school. Um, and I was lucky. My folks had, you know, just let me play it as much as I wanted. And then I had Wonder Boy, uh, which was cool, but not quite. Oh, I think we lost someone. Oh, lost she uh, yeah, I, yeah, she froze for, for a Uh-oh. second. So let's give her a second to get back in here. She'll be back. <laughs> She'll be back. Yeah, I knew you were talking about the uh, the magpies. There have been multiple accounts to where I would just like go to YouTube and watch the videos of them just like attacking people that would just even ride their bike just at parks. They'd just go for them. Or yeah. I've watched videos about drop bears to where you can see they're considering like falling on people and people are just under the trees like, look at this little dude. <laughs> I know, I know. It, I had an, a barbecue one time at my dad's place and he used to feed the magpies and they got really comfortable and friendly at, at his place. And do you guys, have you ever been to the uh, supermarket or uh, Ralph's or whatever in America and seen uh, Nando's Peri Peri sauce? I don't think I have. 
Okay, so we have, a, we have a Portuguese chicken chain, like KFC, but sort of healthy, called Nando's. And they have this amazing sauce called Peri Peri. And I, but in America, they don't have the chain, I don't think. There might be one in New York, but you can buy the sauce in uh, pavilions and Ralph's and stuff. It's amazing. Try it. It's spicy. Anyway, I'd marinated my chicken and I'm cooking it on the barbecue. It's flaming hot. It's like a magpie comes along. Oh, it's like no. hot of chicken, takes it away. But Thanks for cooking it for moment, me, homie. <laughs> yeah, at that very moment, I said to dad, no more feeding the magpies. This has got to stop. <laughs> Too much. Um, but yeah, so Alex the Kid in Miracle World, that was, that was like, that was my one. And then, um, I think I, I took a break from gaming for a while, uh, and then got a, it was the handheld Sega, the first color handheld Sega console that came out just after the, um, Game Boy. I played heaps on Game Boy. Um, but anyway, I think that was when that, it was around the time of the Mega Drive and that's when they released Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, so I finished that. What a great game. He rolls around. Funny little guy. Just saw the movie the other day in Montreal, actually, after the Six Invitational. Um, Was it good? I haven't seen it yet because I'm not too sure on how I feel about the live action Sonic. It, but... was, it was good. Yeah. You know, I'm the biggest critic of video games that turn into movies. Mm -hmm. um, it was good. Shane Bailey from Ubisoft Australia. Uh, we met up. That's when I met him in Montreal. We met up for a coffee and he said, like, oh, yeah, my friend saw it. They said it was really good. And I went. All right, I'm going to walk through the snow and go and see it right now. <laughs> so, uh, Sonic, and then in my, oh, I think it was my early 20s, I really got into Crash Bandicoot. Hey, you're back. All right, here she is. Welcome back. back. It cooked itself. I don't know what happened, but I'm back. <laughs> All right, as long as you're back. Um, Crash Bandicoot, uh, the Crash Bandicoot racing, I think, where you race around an island on go karts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, oh, and then in arcade, in the arcade world, I was a Street Fighter II psychopath. I used to go through my dad's coin drawers and steal all of his coins and go up to the video store and just spend hours playing uh, Street Fighter II um, and Street Fighter II Champion Edition um, and Mortal Kombat and the Simpsons game. Um, and then more recent, oh, and then I did a huge Halo bender. That when that first came out, oh my god, what a oh, yeah. glorious game! Yeah, my friend had a projector, and I'd get, I'd be nearly having panic attacks. It got so intense with all the aliens and nature. And then more recently, I just did a huge stint on Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, <laughs> we got right through to the end, rode around Mozzie's bike, diddly diddly dee. Um, <laughs> and that, yeah, that was amazing. And then more recently, Rainbow Six, but. People keep like, you know, saying to me online, do, do you play Rainbow Six? Oh, you know, who's your favorite attack? Who's your favorite defender? <laughs> so, for once and for all, I'm telling everyone, yes, I play Rainbow Six. Yes, I love it. And I think it's the most glorious. But I've only done the first five uh, situations. You know, before you have to go online? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm a ninja on those things. Like, <laughs> oh. You forget about it. I'm really, really good. But I, I, I played all those when I first got the uh, role of voicing Mozzie. And so I didn't know who I was using. And I was learning to play. You know, I just didn't know anything about it. So people keep asking me all these questions. I'm like, I don't know. But now I'm even more scared to, like, join a team and get online because people will see how crap at it I probably am. <laughs> But yeah, I, I do want to do that, but my Xbox is uh, back in the States and I'm I'm stuck in Australia now for I don't know how long. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my, that's been my gaming history. But um, yeah, I've got a, a huge love of video games and I, I think there's a massive place for them. I try not to, you know, spend too much time. I think they can take over. Um, but I think there's a lot of good comes out of it. Community, obviously, and also I think it can really help with... Uh, you know, your cognitive ability. I've got my dad, I don't know if anyone knows this, my dad's got dementia. And I think right. things like video games that keep your, you know, your mind sharp and your reflexes sharp, um, I think there's a huge place for them and um, you can learn a lot, you know. I mean, they're training military people on them, pilots, racing car drivers. Yeah. Um, 
the best. Big great. <laughs> but I also think we've got to get outside and see the sunshine every now and then. So. Every, every, right. while, every yeah. once in a while. Every once in a while. A lot of my questions actually had a lot to do hey, with uh, Hey, Haley, your uh, video is frozen. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, yeah. It is frozen. That's I unfortunate. It's a good uh, yeah. pose. <laughs> It's a really good poker face. <laughs> I don't even want to know. <laughs> you look gorgeous. You're fine. I know. I looked at. I noticed like you weren't blinking for like a good minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So like I was saying, a lot of my questions have actually had a lot to do with the others' questions, and I don't want you to have to like keep repeating yourself. So I'm just no, gonna no, ask no. you. The... You just ask him anyway, and I'll find a different answer. Don't worry. Um, I'm good at it. I'm just gonna ask the last question that I've got because really my questions were pretty much what they asked you. Um, is there any good advice that you would give to those who want to become uh, voice actors? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think, well, for me, it all started with with acting and you know, it, I think it's it's all part of performance. You know, I think I don't really separate them from separate voice actors from actors. Um, I know there are some people like Jamie Muffet who primarily does, he voices, um, you know, what's his name? Fucking laser sights. Who's that guy? You know. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm having a mental blank. I haven't had enough coffee. Well, I know what you're talking about. The community is going to kill us for not remembering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just woke up. I'm I know. <laughs> Same, you an guys. hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's his She's I'm gonna have to Google it now because it's gonna bother me until I remember. Yeah, you, you Google it and I'll keep talking. But you know, he said he, he primarily does uh, voice work, but I have no doubt that he's. I've you know I've seen him just clowning around. He got the guy can can act, and I think if you want to get into into voice work, I would say it, you know it would start with um, a want to you know be a, a performing artist, um, and that you know it's the same singers and 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 dancers i think they're all interconnected but i do think uh you know and i mean that in, in regards of it's all storytelling um but i do think there's obviously a skill set that comes with um with voice acting in particular i you know i did i don't know how many years of drama school i think i was at drama school overall for about 12 years and i, I think i studied for about shit, 17 in total wow. um and I always thought that voice class was one of my weakest, but I always got along really well with my voice uh, teachers. So maybe it wasn't my weakest. Maybe that was just in my head. But I think if you, you know, if you want to get into it, um, do, do acting classes. You know, I think if you want to do anything in life, do acting classes. It's, you know, it incorporates psychology. It incorporates, you know, in acting, we, you know, we do uh, voice work. We do movement work. Um, so you really get to know your body and, and that's a big part of voice acting, you know, knowing how to use your hands and voice works, knowing how to breathe and project and it's related to singing. So I'd say if you, if you sing, you've, you've got a lot of skills that you would probably need. Um, and if you've, if you've done plays or, or taken acting classes, that all helps. And then just go fucking grind, you know, um, it's, it's not an easy thing to get into. Um, and I think you've got to be okay with being unemployed for long periods of time. <laughs> yeah. If you can handle that stuff, um, I think you can have a career doing this. Um, but if you just want to get into it and be a, a voice actor, just do it on YouTube, you know. You don't have to be good if you love yeah. it. On, like at the end of the day, if you love it, just, you know, I don't know, make your own voices and stick them on YouTube or yeah. make a podcast um, you know, do do little plays where you and your lucky like, we could all get together right now and write a script and <laughs> you know that would start be so saying, cute. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. They like start saying characters' lines, and I think I think they're the difference. Um, the differences between you know doing it because you love it, which is you'll sustain it, you'll keep doing it, um, and doing it because you want a career. You know, I don't consider my career the biggest thing in the world by any stretch of the imagination right now you know i still have to do other jobs to to stay afloat and survive and um but i just I, i've got no option you know 
I think a lot of it's it's a calling and it's something that you you've just got to do. You know, I primarily always considered myself an actor, but voice is just as good. It's the same thing, you know. Um, I can I I feel like it is pretty much the same thing. But I've also heard actors say that they had no idea how difficult voice acting was. Like people that have been on screen doing like high end movies and stuff, they go into voice acting. They're like, I literally had no idea. Like, I've yeah, been watching a yeah. lot of interviews with a lot of different people over the past couple of years. And so I guess that's like part of my love for all the voice actors in these games and these shows that I like to watch. It's like you hear them take on so many different characters. They turn their voice into something that you've never heard them do before. And you're like, oh, crap, that's pretty cool. They're not just playing a character with a wig all the time. It's just yeah, they're literally a different person in that time and moment. And I think it's awesome that you guys can do stuff like that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I guess it's kind of like if you're a boxer, you're boxing with one hand tied behind your back. You, mm. All you've got is your voice. You're very, you're very restricted, so you've you've got to really enhance it and make the most of it. I remember doing my first voiceover course years ago, and uh, being told, you know, if you if you're sort of selling something, make sure you smile. Always <laughs> smile when you're talking because you can hear it in the voice. Um, it might look ridiculous and you would never do it if you had all the, you know, the other qualities that an actor would bring to a part. But as a voice artist, you know, you have to develop all these little tricks um, to get those slight nuances in your voice. So, yeah, and it's an ongoing process, you know. I, I don't think <clears throat> I don't think I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination. Some of the other people I've worked with on Rainbow Six are extraordinary. I look at the stuff they do and I'm like, oh, my God, you guys. How do you do it? And then I just steal what they do and then <laughs> myself. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> it was Thatcher, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to steal his role. Oh, is he? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I don't play a lot he, of them, he, unfortunately, but it's fun. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's my voice. That's my, that's my voice question. <laughs> Uh, Haley, do you got any any other questions? Yeah, can you guys see me? No, uh, no, you're no. still on the uh, oh camera. Oh my off mode. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> this is really annoying, but I don't want to like have to leave the call and come back again. If you go down to the bottom, there should be a turn camera on button. Let's see if I've got one. <laughs> Skype is a little odd. I gotta say, this is the first time I've used Skype in like seven years. So, oh. yeah. What do you normally? What do you normally use? Facebook. I normally, I normally just do Discord. I don't normally do a whole lot of face-to-face -face videos outside of TikTok. So. Okay. Oh, we're all back. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. So, what would you say is your favorite part of voice acting and your favorite part of being in the R6 community? The glory. The glory. <laughs> um, I just get—I mean, the favorite for us just getting to, you know, getting to play around and, and explore a character and, um, you know, learn learn more about myself, uh, and my and my voice and how to present myself and, um, yeah, it's all it's always new and it's constantly evolving and developing. Um, I studied acting for so, so long, um, but I haven't specifically studied, uh, you know, voice work in quite the same capacity as I have acting. Um, so each time I, I get a new job, it's, you know, I get nervous and I'm like, oh, shit, I, you know, I hope I can do this. Whereas acting, I, you know, I kind of feel like I've got, for the most part, I've got my stuff down. I'm always learning, obviously, but um, it, voice, voice work's still very exciting to me. And it's it still feels like uncharted territory, and I've got a lot of um, love to do animated films, cartoons, and uh, you know more video games, obviously. So um, everything about it is is really exciting. And, um, and accent work, I love doing accent work. You know, I booked a German soldier in a huge game. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was in Italy a few years ago and I didn't get to do it. But oh, at the time, God. I was a little bit relieved because I think I'd pulled the accent out of my ass at the time. I <laughs> and as much as I wanted this job, I was like, thank God, I don't think I could have done that much battle chatter in, in Germany. <laughs> now it would have been fine. Just scream. Just yell yeah. and you'll be fine. Yeah, That's exactly. all you have to do. <laughs> you know, 
Like the, no one can really tell. Um, and then what was the second part of the question about the R6 community? Uh, yeah, what would you say is your favorite part about it? Just being a part of it, you know. Um, I think, and, and, you know, like I said, with, you know, the cosplay community, just getting to enter it on this le level where I'm a part of it. Um, <laughs> and it's a whole new, it's been a whole new world for me, you know new game, new fan base, new company to, to work with, um, new bunch of actors that I get to work with um, who are amazing and just, you know, nice people and watching their careers, watching all the cosplayers, R6 cosplayers, you know, seeing people dress up as Mozzie is amazing. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty cool. When I was at R6, I, I can't remember who you guys might know who the cosplayer was um i got to, i put some photos online mm. but you know just just meeting you know people that are so passionate about something that you're involved in is incredible you know um yeah it's nice it's nice it's just nice that you know have a community that cares about each other and supports each other so yeah it's probably my favorite part is just being a part of it Except for the game chat. <laughs> we don't talk about game chat. <laughs> we don't need to talk about We don't that. talk about game chat. <laughs> yeah. Or the kids that get angry at cosplayers for no reason. <laughs> We've I all got our share of those. I saw something happened online. Someone got chewed out the other day for doing a cosplay dance. And I was... Or they, some of these people, cosplayers, thought they were taking the piss out of cosplay dance. What is the cosplay dance? Is there a cosplay dance? Oh. Okay, so what you're talking so there's this really popular creator on TikTok now. She's like 15 or 16. I, I don't, I think her name's Char Charlie. Charlie. So I guess she was, um, there are cosplayers of different communities on TikTok. I'm sure you've seen there's like video games, there's anime characters, all these different people. Um, yeah. And some of those characters do like specific things, like they'll do this and that and all these different things. I guess uh, her and a friend of hers were kind of like making fun of cosplayers by doing that. And there was like a huge wave of people that were really offended by it because so, people look up to her. So, so with, with the, um, y you guys can teach me a little bit more about cosplayers now. Now I get to ask you some questions. <laughs> so, how many different like like lands or universes of cosplayers are there obviously we've got video games we've got anime movies there's movies um there's yeah, comic more... comic books comic books yep yeah yep. and then like even within those there's like specific mm -hmm. communities because like we have like our little rainbow six community but some rainbow six cosplayers will do like their own characters or they'll do like call of duty um they'll just like yeah with their own little creations they call them OCs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what they I started off up. as. OCs, what, what, like OC. own creations of like, they'll take the video game that they really, really care about and they will make their own character and they will have a backstory for them and like, oh, mm -hmm. this is what they would do. This is their appearance. That's what I started off as. I didn't start off as an IQ cosplayer. Okay. Yeah. I started off as like my own like, oh, this is my character. And people are like, oh, you're you? And I'm like, no, but now I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's not yeah. real. It's really cool, but there's also people that cosplay from webtoons, like just like little mm. things you can scroll through. There's a vast variety of cosplayers out there, and they all have their own little quirks, which is really neat. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. brings and something people. special. Mm -hmm. And all cosplayers cool with each other. Like, well, most of us are. It's just that, like certain groups don't get along with each other for like certain reasons. That sometimes it's like. The shows like writers didn't get along with each other or something. Yeah. That's so it's people... kind of like, it's kind of like the world. Yeah, exactly. Like there will always be people that are super welcoming to others, but then there will always be people who feel like what they're doing is better than what others <laughs> and they let it get oh, to their just, head. Yeah. 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 Just Some just people the world. grow an yeah. ego. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, like at the end of the day we're all just nerds and exactly. the outfits we made ourselves or all, costumes we bought. We're all like nine guys, but we also just like to cosplay characters. <laughs> yeah. That's rad. We're but all dancing in our part. rooms as uh, <laughs> as characters. At four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've, noticed, I've noticed that. Everyone's yeah. in their room. 
and everyone's yeah. dancing and it's always late at night. Yeah. yeah that's like right. the standard. Um, yeah. <laughs> when everybody else is asleep so you can do what you want. Yeah, exactly. Very true. Like, I won't have my mom there... knocking on my door. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in this? Is there like, is there, would you say there's an age bracket um, that people will generally start cosplaying and, and then when you, you know, the community would go, yeah, you've been on for it now, mate. Or, or is like their 80 year old cosplayers. How does that there, work? There are, there's a, a big variety of cosplayers out there. I personally started at 12 years old. Um, I've been doing it a long time. I'm 25 now and I'm one of the oldest in the seed cosplay community on TikTok. Okay. But like there's also I see like a lot of them are mostly between the ages of like 17 and 21 to 22 because that's when they can start working and they can afford to buy their own cosplays. But you'll still see people that are in their 80s. Like I saw a really good um, I can't remember his name right now and it's going to I'm going to get so much heat for it. Um, the older guy from Dragon Ball Z master. What's his name? Um, I can't remember, but he's got like the big shell on his back that he carries around. He's got his cane. He's always hunched over. But there's a yeah, there's a 80 year old man that walks around a lot of the Texas conventions. He brings that character every time, but he turned himself into this anime character, and it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, that's unreal. Cosplay has no age boundaries, and the people that yeah. make fun of people that are for being older, those are the ones that just lost what it's like to be a kid. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> try our best. And they're having fun, and they're being yeah. themselves. Yeah. 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 So, and yeah. even like uh, younger kids, like, They'll, like, save up and get, like, a tactical vest and, like, be, like, recruit or uh, pulse or something. Like, you know, but we're all, like, welcoming for everyone. Yeah. Like, it's just, I just love seeing, like, the variety. Like, everyone's got their different outfits and their vests and masks and stuff. But it's, like, they're yeah. their character. And it's, like, they're just having fun. Just love to see it. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I found amazing when I was at uh, the Invitational. I can't remember. Who's the character... And they're just full camo, and the <clears throat> pardon me, the costume's gigantic, uh, all camo on their face. Cap can maybe? Up. That might be Cap can. Cap or Fuse? Like... Fuse is pretty chunky too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuse doesn't show his face though. Well, um, Glass a... has the eyes and the so does Cap can. Like, oh, it might be camo. Glass. It might be Glass because yeah. I know he has like a camo skin on his face, but he has a yeah. like lava, so that might be. That was it. I think okay. That was it. Because there was Bella Clava here, and there was this girl dressed up, and holy, holy shit! It was <laughs> she was dripping sweat, but she was so it was like, it was the most amazing costume. But then the thing is, when you go out into the snow in Montreal, oh, you're toasty warm. <laughs> Exactly. So that's a good thing. <laughs> These are definitely yeah. not summer cosplays, but a lot of people will do it. Like, I had a couple of friends that went to a convention down in Texas last year. They wore their full kit for oh Siege. Gosh. And this was in the middle of July. And they're like, we're overheating. I was like, I wonder why you guys are wearing yeah. full gear. Yeah. Even get the summer version. Hot. Huh? Hot. Yeah, like, I yeah. wore this. This is a real Russian Gorka. I wore it to a summer convention in Los Angeles. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I, I, I put, like, lens defogger on this, and it's still fogged to where I couldn't see. And then, he, and then he perished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but it is cool because even though with like multiple people cosplaying the same character, like there's a bunch of IQs, there's a bunch of Capcans, a bunch of Ellis, a whole bunch of the same character on TikTok and on Instagram. But you'll see yeah. all of them have their own kind of like, I want to say quirk, but I guess quirk, whatever. They all have their own sort of quirk that they put off with the character. So it still feels like every IQ, every Ella, every Mew, every, any cosplay, they're all somehow different one of another. I think that's it's awesome. Like a different, it's like a different source, honestly. Yeah, Ex you exactly. <laughs> it's like it comes off like a different technique. Sometimes you have Sometimes you have mushroom. Sometimes you just might have a squirt of lemon. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it is cool. It is cool. Yeah, awesome. I'm personally out What's of next? What do we got next? Um, what made you want to make a TikTok account? Ah, Gary <laughs> Good question. You guys know who Gary V is? Let me explain. He's <laughs> like, it's, uh, he's an entrepreneur, no, entrepreneur in uh, New York. He's great on social media. And I think I follow a few of his accounts. And 
he's always giving advice to influencers and and hip hop artists and you know business leaders and um he's just like this really passionate kind of new york guy who i i just i think he's he's great to watch anyway his videos pop up on uh instagram and you know you get catch glimpses of him when you scroll you know going to a casual 10 minutes to kill in an afternoon and uh but I, he kept banging on about tiktok he's like tiktok's this it's going to be the new instagram da, 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 da. first facebook died now instagram it's going to be tiktok get on tiktok and i've just been hearing this over and over and i'm like you know as a as a performer we're encouraged to have instagram accounts and i've been so over instagram and because it, it's addictive this shit right it is yeah, yeah. it is so I really had gotten to a point where I'm like, look, just discipline yourself. Don't spend too much time on social media. Chill out. But we still have to do it for work. You know, you got a show coming out or you do a commercial or whatever. You, you know, you want to share it with the world. It's kind of our, you know, our own channel, so to speak. Um, and But anyway, so I heard uh, Gary V banging on about, about uh, TikTok. I'm like, fuck, really? Another one? Oh, man, you know, you got Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. It, it's just so much. A Snapchat, I just, I, mate, I gave up on that a long time ago. I couldn't do <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I created the TikTok account and I posted a few things. I think I'd thrown a trailer up for a movie that I'm just finishing off at the moment. Um, and like three people watched it. And I think I'd put a couple of things on. I can't even remember couple of things on there and it was like this mate tiktok's not for me it was just people <laughs> you know, doing their dances, right? yeah. i can still hear all the songs because you know there are the particular songs that everyone mm -hmm. does just their little dances, yeah. Yeah. pop their hip and all that sort of stuff <laughs> <laughs> um so then uh before the invitational i i think i'd made a video oh the first one um being like, hey, you know, it's Mozzie, uh, the voice of Mozzie. I've um, some people have wanted me to say some stuff to fiddly diddly d, whatever I said. And I, it was right when the Aussie bushfires were happening, you know, a few months ago, I don't know, two months ago, a month ago, I don't know. Anyway, I put it on, I put the video on Instagram, and then I put it on, it just as like a passing thought. I went, I'll chuck it on the the ticky tocky thing. So I put it on TikTok and forgot about it. And then I think I hashtag something Rainbow Six on the Instagram video. And I didn't think about it the next day. And then the following day I was in um, my local coffee shop with a friend of mine and I went, I logged on to Instagram and had all these new followers and likes on the video um, of all these Rainbow Six uh, fans. Holy guacamole! <laughs> this is crazy. And then I sat there and had a little bit more of my coffee. And then I went, oh, I put that thing on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I opened it up and like I don't know, forty thousand people had looked at it. And I went, what the flying <laughs> fuck is going on here? <laughs> went, this must be a thing. I've never had that many people look at anything I've ever done. <laughs> I should probably do another one. And I was like. Oh, all right, so I set up my camera and did it and tried to think, like, what can I say with some stuff that Mozzie can say and said some more Mozzie lines and boom, 140 people, 1,000 people looked at it. And I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> and But people loved it. All the cosplayers and R6 fans, like, really, really loved it. Um, and, you know, as I, it's, it was strange because I'd been steering away from social media because I just – you know, I didn't want to spend all my time on it because I dedicate a lot of time to my, you know, my career. But then I felt this responsibility to the people who were loving my videos. And another thing that, and then I was, and then I think I posted a video on, uh, on TikTok, uh, the third one or something, and um, not many people watched it. And I got all butthurt. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. I thought I was <laughs> I understand. Now the I'm algorithm. Yeah, no one loves me. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. And then I was scrolling through uh, some other people's videos and one of Gary V's videos comes up and he's, he's being all like, 
you know, deep in New York. And he goes, if there's one thing I could tell you, if there's one thing he's coaching some, you know, TikTok star or something, there's one thing I can tell you, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry about likes. Yep. And I went, you know what? You're right. If there's one person who this makes happy, I got a responsibility to them to keep doing it. And so then I went, all right, every day, post a video, even if you can't be bothered or you got work, find time somehow. Um, and so I did another one. Oh, this is so <laughs> and, uh, and so now I'm like, it's the thing, you know, it's, you know, everyone gets involved and it's difficult because the way that I am, I want to write back to everyone. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of in a way lucky that it's the apocalypse at the moment because I've got more time than I would normally have to, mm-hmm. to write back to people. And, and so I will post it on uh, my videos on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. I need to rip them all and put them on YouTube as well, but I just haven't had time. But, it, you know, because I've had a little bit of extra time, I'm actually, I can get back to some people and write back to some people. And um, I would love to write back to everyone if I could. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's gotten to a point where it's like, I actually, it's becoming hard to manage. You know, manage. Right. It becomes um, a bit possible. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'll just, I'll keep posting it, try and post at least one video a day. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, I'm not trying to do anything with it. I just, someone will make a suggestion. I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll do that. You know, just letting it kind of take its own course and, you know, jump on the boat and go for the ride. It's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So that's awesome my TikTok cool. story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and cool. I am personally out of questions because all of mine really did have a lot to do with the other's questions. So. I think I got like three left, two or three. All right, hit me with a sandboy. Hit, hit me slowly. Hit me quick. Hit me. That was another <laughs> TV commercial when I was growing up. No, um, no. You, did you guys have sand, Did you guys have sandboy chips? Sandboy? Sandboy chips. I don't, I don't think so. Got Doritos? I don't, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Doritos, yeah. Google, Google, Google after this. Google Sandboy Chip Australian Commercial 1980s. Oh, God. And you see, hit me slowly, hit me quick, hit me with the Sandboy Chip, hit me. In fact, that might be a mashup of two different commercials. Anyway, it's great ad. Yeah. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, okay, which was the question? Um, have you watched any R6 cosplayer content on TikTok? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening. And he, I don't know how he won a little soft spot in my heart that electrifies stuff. Aww. I think he was one of the first people to find me and he was just so like, I don't know, passionate, mm-hmm. and and he, he he does dancing. So I, whenever I see that his comment or people tag him all the time in my videos, and as I'm going through, I'm like, I better t- t- click on his tag. So I'll oh. do it, and he's doing a, a funny dance. <laughs> and, but and often it will be in a split screen with someone else, and I yeah. and I watch it a bit, and I'm like, I have no fucking idea what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, but he tries to great. like make us do it too. He's like, guys, dance with me, like do, do the dance. duets, and I'm like, I don't is know that, how to do that. He, just, he, loves he likes he loves dancing. It's his it's his brand. He's yeah, oh, it's like his he's dancing okay, mozzie. So, that, like, so I guess yeah. really the truth is all I watch is electrifies. <laughs> Oh, that's why I'm so happy. He's going to screech. Like. But, but, um, He's going to get on TikTok and be like, did you hear what he said? <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, I'm still learning so much about it all. So, um, yeah, I do. I've, like, on Instagram, I found a couple of uh, a couple of cosplayers. And um, it's been difficult, though, because, because especially on my TikTok, I've gotten so many people have followed me. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't even know. There's thousands i don't know where to start yeah it's hard to go through i don't really yeah i don't really add people uh very often um Mm -hmm. because i don't know what's going on there's just too much happening on there you know but yeah so i have i've watched a lot of the videos but i'm still slowly kind of learning about the community and what's going on with the dancers and um (laughs) and some people walking around with plastic guns yeah Um, and and then there'll be some where there's just still frames where like they'll pose um and I guess try and 
make a photo that looks like something out of the game, but in real life, if you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and We've all done like trends like that. <laughs> I think, I think like we're, this we're, we're guilty of like... that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and then some of them are like, like legit, like professional photo shoots. And it almost look. I saw one girl and it almost looked like it was a cartoon. Like I, I wasn't sure for a minute. I'm looking at it and I'm going, is this, uh, <laughs> is this a real person or is this cartoon? It was that well professionally done. Mm. Um, so it's fascinating. So I'm still really learning about it. Like I'm not going to pretend that I have any idea what I'm, <laughs> that I know what I'm saying. I don't. Yeah. And I'm still learning. <laughs> it's great. It tastes fun. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have? If you weren't voicing Mozzie, which operator would you want to voice? Mm. I would like to steal... Thatcher's job, and I would like to steal uh, Sledge's job. Ryan and Jamie, I'm coming up. <laughs> um, no, I I think. Uh, do you mean in terms of R six or just in general? Uh, I I think R R six. Um. Probably. I I don't know. I I really do. I love. Uh, the voice that Jamie uses for Thatcher. It's it's just so endearing. You know, my dad's from England and a lot of my, my dad's family are from England and there's something very comforting about uh, about that accent. Mm. Um, so, you know, doing something in that accent would be heaps of fun. Um, but, you know, as I said, I also love I love Scottish show. Sledges. Brian <laughs> stuff. You know, it's a lot of fun to listen to. Yeah. Yeah, I guess those ones kind of feel like close to home for me, but still a challenge. Um, see him. I think he, you know, he gets a lot of liberties and he can say a lot of things that other people might not be able to say. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else do I have? <laughs> Sorry, I have... What is going on oh in the back? God, he this little dude. <laughs> he keeps, oh, it's a that? ferret. This is a ferret. Oh, I thought it was a badger. <laughs> he looks like a little badger, doesn't he? What's yeah. His Bandit. Oh, <laughs> I named him Bandit. Bandit. <laughs> yeah. What a good little ferret. He's Are they, so do they make cute. a good pet? Yes, he looks, actually. He looks like a he's... psycho. He keeps opening his mouth like he's going to eat everybody. <laughs> No, oh, he's adorable. So they adapt, They do make actually really, really good pets. They're kind of like long, skinny cats. Okay. <laughs> you just wow. treat them the same way you treat a cat, except you they can handle pets. You're not allowed to pull their tail? I mean, <laughs> you can, but he wouldn't like it very it's much. Broke. It's only got a little tail, that thing. Huh? Oh, yeah, it's they're very... Little... <laughs> it's, a, it's a stumpy one. He's wow. very, He's very sweet, though. He's a big cuddle boy. But I love him very much. He's, you could just do whatever you want with them. They're very weird. Yeah, he's very friendly. <laughs> L- little noodle boy. He's trying to figure out what that bright light is. He's like, what is that light? <laughs> he's a ramen noodle. Oh, wait here yes. for one second. Let's bring the witch. Look. Oh. <laughs> Man, he was just behind me, like, messing with all my shit. And I'm like, let me love you. <laughs> wait, is that what was running in front of the door? Yeah, that was Bandit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just while I, just while I think of it. So, oh my god! <laughs> Made me hungry. Me, oh. me, me go ring and wait. Get ready for it. These are the legit mama shrimp tom yum soup flavor. Oh, it's oh really my gosh! Really <laughs> that looks good. They're good. good. They're, but it's tom yum flavor, not so much shrimp. I don't know. They've got those little freeze dried shrimps. This is my apocalypse stash. And then I wasabi. Love wasabi. Wasabi. Mm. These are so good. They're so, they're so crunchy and delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what, what was the next one, Chris? Oh, oh yeah, because my my uh, thing like disconnected me for a second. Yeah, you're frozen right now. There you go. You're back to normal. I can see you. <laughs> All right. Because it was like everybody froze, and then it just like shut the program for me. Oh no! Oh, gosh. oh no! So now now it's all good. Yeah, sorry for missing like a whole four minutes. I got a call, and they're like, "You're not sick. <laughs> you're not sick anymore. You're fine." I'm like, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is the final question that I have. Is there a book that if turned into a movie that you would want... Oh, oh and I got to read because I, I typed in garbled nonsense. 
<laughs> if there was a movie version of one of your favorite books, would you want to act or voice act in it, and which character? There's two. So, there's his uh, children's book author called Maurice Sendak, and he did uh, Where the Wild Things Are, and a book which was my favourite when I was growing up called In the Night Kitchen. And I always thought that would be incredible if that was turned into like an animated, a short animated film uh, for kids. So that one I'd love to voice. And a movie that I would love to act in. So that was that comes from a book. Um, did you guys ever read Day of the Triffids? I can't say I've heard of it. So my dad got me to read it when I was little, and it was about... It's been a long time since I've read it. And as far as I know, it might have been turned into a, a movie like back, back, back in the day. But it's about these triffids, these trees. This is from my memory. Someone on here will say, you're so wrong. Someone watching this. But it's about these trees, these triffids that kind of take over the world, like War of the, like War of the Worlds or the coronavirus. <laughs> and people have to, like, rebel against these trees, these triffids. Um and I thought if they made that into a movie, I'd, I would love to be <laughs> Ginger Tom Cruise, <laughs> who, like in War of the World, has to fight against the alien and throw hand grenades into the alien machine's uterus. Because um, I think that's how he brought it down. I watched it the other day, but I was falling asleep. I think that's what he did. Is that the thing where he like um, they put him in a basket underneath it and they like sucked it yes. in? I know what you're yes. talking about. Yeah, yes. he literally was like halfway in it and then he fell out. And I was like, he, he just let him out. go. <laughs> he let it in there and then it shut down all the things. So yeah. I can't actually remember how they dealt with the triffids, but I thought that would be cool. Um, if you know, in terms of a book. Um, but I, I've never been a huge uh, reader of novels. I'm. I don't know why. I think I'm just like a movie head. Um, I read a lot of uh, biographies and autobiographies. Um, but it, it, so if so, if if I could play a character from how about we do if I could play a character from like an old IP um, in movies, I, I want to play like Dirty Harry. Do you know <laughs> see Dirty Harry? Yeah, I just reckon that would be rad. I can see that. Big magnum, shooting people in the balls, you know, like yeah. that's the that. raunchy comedy that could come from that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that yeah, I think that something like that would be heaps of fun. But yeah, we'll, we'll go with Day of the Triffids for the sake of the question. <laughs> yeah. But low key, we got the real answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still at questions, so I think it's all up to Chris. I, I think that's that's all my questions too. So if you, anybody has anything they want to shout out, anything they want to say, any last remarks, I'll I'll um, say some shit. All right. Say what you want to say. Why yeah. not? Um, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's come and visited me on uh, Instagram and 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 TikTok and Twitter. Um, just for being rad uh, and you know, embracing me and allowing me to be part of the community. You know, all the cosplayers and fan artists. <laughs> Sunstar <laughs> and South Siege. They're like watch looking at all their uh, their artworks amazing. I went to art school for a little while, so still sort of being able to interact with, with artists is amazing, you know, and cosplayers. Yeah. And just everyone who plays the game. And you're all glorious. We're all glorious. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i love the support that everyone shows each other in the community so keep it keep it going i think at the moment with uh with what we're facing uh we need each other so yeah yeah, yeah. just thanks to everyone for you know looking after me through these difficult <laughs> times <laughs> we no, appreciate yeah. you thanks. yeah <laughs> especially with you taking so much time out of your day to do this i'm sure you're you're busy even though we're all locked out i'm sure there's other things that you have to do <laughs> Great to, great to chat with you guys. Awesome. Chris? 
All right. I believe it is time for the outro. Just like the intro, just without some words. <laughs> All right. So, as always, thank you for Chris, a.k.a. Mr. Zoom underscore 2028, with my co-hosts. Uh, Star Fox or Dacos on Instagram. Mm, Eagle Ella or Toka Bunny. And we've had our special guest. Marty Copping. <clears throat> At Marty Copping on everything. <laughs> Literally everything. Get you some wasabi, wasabi peas. <laughs> oh, they're delicious. Oh, they're so glorious. They're so mm. good. All right. I haven't All had right. breakfast yet. Yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. You should probably go get some breakfast, some more coffee. I saw you uh, looking at your cup like you were a little offended oh, that you no, were out. No. <laughs> you were like, mmm. <laughs> I'm still allowed to go and get a coffee from the coffee shop, but I've got to keep mm. 1.5 meters away. Mm. So I think I'll go and do that, support my local business, and I don't think we're going to be able to for much longer. Yeah, yeah. We'll so go, I'd say go for it. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. recording stopping in three, two, <laughs> one.